In this demonstration, we'll create a private endpoint for an Azure Container Apps environment so that the applications within the environment could be accessible only through the private endpoint. So we'll go to disable the public access for the Azure Container Apps environment, and then we'll enable the creation of a private DNS zone that will resolve through the private link uh, FQDN, the access and the name resolution for the private endpoint. And then we'll test the connectivity to the container apps through the private endpoint with an Azure virtual machine that will be hosted within the same VNet of the private endpoint. I've created the lab for this demonstration where on this GitHub repository, you will find here within the folder 25, the commands.ps1 file that will create the resources or the Terraform files that will create uh, all the resources needed for this lab. Once those resources are created, we can view those resources within the Azure portal. So here I have my container apps environment and the rest of the resource. Not here the private endpoint, I have created it earlier. But for now, let's check the configuration of the environment itself. So here now we have a new option that is the networking blade, where from here we can go to enable or disable the public network access. And this is very important right here. So before this option was not uh, uh, available. So the public network access was always enabled if you don't opt for an internal uh, container apps. Now you can enable it and disable it. So to use an Azure private endpoint, you need to disable that public network access. And then from here, you would have an option to create a new private endpoint. So note that here I have a, an existing private endpoint, but let me show you how you can create a new private uh, endpoint. So I click here on this link that will take me to the private endpoint connections for my Azure container apps. And then here I can go to create a new private endpoint. I'll choose the advanced option in order to get to view all the options that I have. First of all, I choose the resource group where to put the private endpoint and then the name of my private endpoint, the region, the name of the network interface. And then within the resource section, we should choose here the uh, resource type and also the sub resource, which is managed environments for myself. And that will reference my uh, Azure Container Apps environment. Next, we go to the virtual network where we choose here where to put the private endpoint. So we choose here the virtual network and then we choose the subnet. And then next we have the configuration for the DNS. And that's the last uh, part for the configuration where here we should choose to integrate with private DNS zone or you want to create it yourself. So for simplicity here, I'll choose yes. This means that Azure will create a new private DNS zone within this uh, resource group that I've spe specified. And then the name of that private DNS zone will be the following. If I expand this one right here. Yes, then here we can see that private link that will be created or this private DNS zone that will be created and attach it to my virtual network. Then next here, I can choose the tags and that's optional and then review and decreate. And if all was good, then I can just go to click create. So for my case here, I have already a private endpoint that was uh, created that I've created before. And we can see this one available here. I can see it here. If I click there, then this will take me to the private endpoint and then I can see the DNS configuration for it. So I can see here the network interface card that you is using the address 10.0.0.4 and that will resolve to the FQDN of my Azure Container Apps environment. You can also view here the configuration of the private DNS zone that is attached to this container apps. So if I click on that link, this will take me to the private DNS zone. And from here, if I navigate then to the record sets, I would see the new record that was added to resolve access to the private endpoint. If I click edit right here, then I will see here the full FQDN name that will be used. Great. And the last config here is that that private DNS zone should be attached to my virtual network where I have implemented the private endpoint. Good. So now let's test access to this uh, uh, private endpoint.
So if I, if I go back to my resource groups, you know that here I have already provisioned an Azure virtual machine that is using Linux within the virtual network of my container apps. So I'll use this VM in order to resolve access or to get access to my uh, container apps. So I'll choose this application, for example, which is the sample Nginx app. And then here I'll go to take the application URL. So I'll copy this link from here and then I'll go back to my virtual machine. And then I'll go to search for run commands. And I'll use this feature in order to run a command without accessing to my virtual machine through SSH or through RDP. So this is a useful tool in order to just send commands to the uh, Azure virtual machine through the Azure portal. So the first command I want to test is NS lookup. Then I paste the domain name or the FQDN of my Azure container apps. And then here I hit run. And note the answer here actually is the private IP address of the private endpoint, which is 10.0.0.4, as we have seen earlier. And also that uh, public FQDN actually will take me to the private link resource for my uh, container apps. So here that's the link that is using private link. Great, now let's try access to that uh, container apps from this uh, Azure virtual machine. So for that, I'll use curl and then the HTTP link here. So if I hit run, so remember this virtual machine is within the same virtual network where I have the uh, private endpoint. So it should have access to the resource. And here I get the response. So this first part is the DNS resolution. And then the second part here is the answer coming from my Nginx application. So it's showing me here, welcome to Nginx. So this proves that from this virtual machine, I could access to the container apps through the private endpoint. And that's how to provision and configure a private endpoint with Azure Container Apps. Thank you. Azure Container Apps comes with support for Azure Private Endpoint. What does that mean? So now when you have an Azure Container App environment with one or multiple applications, you can create a private endpoint into any VNet. That private endpoint will provide a private connectivity to your Container Apps environment so that the Container Apps environment could be accessible only through this private endpoint. This means that the public access for this container app environment could be disabled. Then all the resources like the VMs, the applications hosted within the virtual network of the private endpoint will have access to the private container apps environment. So this will add to the security of your network. And when we use a private endpoint, it means that here we have a network interface card with a private IP address. And with container app environment with the applications, we would typically have DNS name. Now to, to resolve that DNS name through the private link, we'll be using a private DNS zone that will resolve the private link into private address of the private endpoint. Now, how can you enable the private endpoint within the Azure portal? So first, change to make is that you, you should go to your container apps environment and then make sure that the public network access should be disabled. You will see a new menu that will appear for private endpoints when where you can create one or multiple private endpoints. Then you go to create a private endpoint in the Azure portal, it will be automatically approved. And then within the creation process, you can enable the creation of a private uh, uh, DNS zone that will use this link right here, private link dot the name of the Azure region dot Azure container apps dot IO. And from here, it will create actually the name of your container apps environment as a record. Then it will point to the private IP address of private endpoint. So then later when you, you have like a virtual machine, for example, that needs to connect to the container apps, then it will be able to resolve the domain name for that uh, container apps. And for that, it will get here the private IP address. And then if you try to connect to the web app behind that is hosted within your container apps by just running curl and then the full DNS name of the, uh, the container app, here you'll get the response. And in my case, here it's hosting an Nginx application that will expand with the message, welcome to Nginx to create a private container apps, we have two options. Either we use 
VNet integration within container apps or we use the private endpoint. So what is the difference now between those two options? So private endpoint, the advantage of that we can create it in any virtual network in your tenant. This is really useful for use cases where you want to expose your application for your providers or for your customers, for example, uh, privately, then you just create a private endpoint for each of your customers. However, the private endpoints support only the inbound HTTP traffic. Private endpoint here cannot connect or doesn't provide outbound connection to the resources hosted within the VNet where you have the private endpoint. The connection within the private endpoint is in one direction, which is the inbound and not outbound. For the outbound, you should opt for the VNet integration option. In addition to that, the TCP traffic is not supported within a private endpoint. And also the traffic within the private endpoint is not free, so you will pay, pay for that traffic. Allow me next for a demonstration where we'll go to create a container apps environment and then we'll create private endpoint to provide private connectivity within the subnet of uh, uh, the private endpoint for a resource that is going to be a virtual machine in our case. And we'll see also how we can configure the private link connection.